sorry, my tripod is really being like not cooperative today. Hello everyone, my name is Lucy. Welcome back to my channel. And this character essay is part of a series of character essays on the Archie Comics characters and how them and their relationships with others should be portrayed in Riverdale that would help dimensionalize them better while staying truer to the comics. Today in the hot seat, we have... Kevin Keller! <laughs> this one is going to be juicy. Kevin Keller is a fictional character in the Archie Comics universe. He premiered in Veronica number 202 in September 2010. The issue proved so popular that it spurred Archie Comics to run a second printing for the first time in its history. And this is especially impressive considering that the Archie Comics have existed since 1941. Created by writer and artist Dan Parent, Kevin is the first openly gay character in Archie Comics history. In Kevin's first issue, Isn't It Bromantic, Veronica develops a huge crush on him and expresses interest in dating him, but he's uninterested. As he and Jughead are bonding over their mutual love of food, Kevin explains that he doesn't want to be with Veronica because he's gay. Keller returned in Veronica number 205 and headlined his own four-issue miniseries, Kevin Keller, beginning in June 2011. The new series focused on his life before he arrived in Riverdale, including his struggles in junior high. Kevin had tougher times growing up in Bricktown, where his good looks didn't develop for a number of years. He was part of a geeky clique along with friends Wendy and William, the former which had a long time crush on him. The Keller family moved place to place due to his dad's army responsibilities. In July of 2011, Archie Comics announced that Kevin would star in his own ongoing solo title, also titled Kevin Keller. The new series debuted in February 2012 and featured Kevin becoming class president while also dealing with adversity. The series ended in November of 2014 with 15 issues. In April of 2015, Archie Comics announced that Kevin would headline another solo series, Life with Kevin. The series by Dan Parent and Inker J. Bone debuted on June 22, 2016 online with a paper version later being published. That story is set in a post high school timeline following Kevin as he fulfills his dream of becoming a journalist in New York City. Notice I said journalist and not Broadway star. Kevin is portrayed as one of the nicest boys in school, the school president at Riverdale High, and immediately part of the Archie and Friends gang. Kevin enjoys eating almost as much as Jughead and can get quite flustered by Reggie's jokes. Much like his father, Colonel Keller, Kevin hopes to join the military one day and fight the good fight. This is an essential aspect of the way Kevin has been presented, not as an anomaly or an unassailable paragon, but as another teenager in Riverdale. Like Archie, Betty, Veronica, Jughead, and Reggie, Kevin has continued to appear in the Short Digest comics and Archie comics crossovers. In 2013, Kevin's ongoing solo series, Archie's pal Kevin Keller, won a GLAAD award. When the nomination was announced, the Archie Comics president, Mike Pellerito, said in a statement, The Archie Comics are and always will be a place that embraces diversity. The fact that Kevin is regularly included in the stories and given plenty of his own since his introduction demonstrates that the Archie Comics is serious about this sentiment of inclusion. Archie Comics co-CEO John Goldwater explained that including an openly gay character is a way to open up the world of Riverdale and destigmatize homosexuality. Archie's hometown of Riverdale has always been a safe world for everyone. It just makes sense to have an openly gay character in the Archie comic books. Veronica writer Dan Parent concurred, saying that it shows that Riverdale is in the 21st century. And guys, just when, when I say like Riverdale, when I'm like quoting people like that, like the Archie Comics writers and president and CEO and stuff, I don't mean the show. Just, I mean, I know that you guys probably know that I don't mean the show. I mean, you know, the town that the comics characters live in, you know? <laughs> that was just a quick side note, just, just, just clarifying anything that that might cause any confusion. Now let's talk about Kevin's introduction in both the comics and the show, specifically centered around Veronica. In the comics, she wanted to date him because he was handsome and nice, later finding out that he's gay and developing a friendship with him. And in the show, you remember the scene, right? Veronica Lodge, Kevin Keller. Veronica's new here. Kevin is gay, thank God. Let's be best friends. 
she could tell he was gay just by looking at him. And in the show, that's all he is. He's the gay one. Now, I want to make it clear that there is no correct way to look gay. If someone is gay and their personal style fits the bill of the stereotype, that's totally fine and good. But that's not who Kevin is. And that's not his personal style. The show literally changed everything about him and made him into a walking stereotype. That is the problem. In the show, he's the gay best friend and an accessory to Veronica, Cheryl, and especially Betty. And, like so many other gay best friends, I can't help but acknowledge how one-sided all of these friendships are. In the show, Betty turns to Kevin for support and offers close to none in return. Betty and Kevin's friendship means that it's all about Betty all the time. Kevin is her purse. And on top of this, he has gotten zero development and growth as a character and person. He was the gay best friend in the beginning and he still is now. Now I want you to think of Kevin's character in the show. Are you thinking of him? Okay, what word comes to mind? Gay, right? Now this is so problematic, especially considering today's progressive climate that we're supposed to be living in. Now there's a video by Mother's Basement that I'm sure that some of you have seen, and it's called How Riverdale Betrays Its Source Material and Why I Care. Um, this is uh, one of my favorite videos, <laughs> at least one of my favorite videos about Riverdale and the Archie comics. And there's a comment on that video that um, I'm going to read. And it says, that thing with Kevin is, in my opinion, one of the worst things done. Gay should never be an aspect of a personality. It should be an aspect of who you are as a person, if you are, but that does not define your personality. The comics actually worked this in really well. If he hadn't been gay, while he'd be a less prominent character, he'd still have a personality. This Kevin? He's... he's gay. That's it. He's gay. Now, I think that that's really, really beautifully said and really sums up the point that I'm trying to get across too. Kevin has a personality in the comics and his own character. And not only that, in the comics, he's integrated into the Archie and Friends gang right from the beginning. And this was said in the video, but the Archie comics is so quintessentially American that welcoming Kevin into the Archie and Friends gang sends the message that this is an attitude and a value that Americans should have. Now, this was back in 2010, so that was really powerful. Now, in my hypothetical version of Riverdale that I would have wanted instead, Kevin would, of course, actually have a character arc. <laughs> and he would be his own fleshed out person and not just a caricature. Honestly, I don't think as a character in the show they would have to change a lot about his comic book character. I mean, they certainly wouldn't have to change everything about him and change every single one of his comic interests into a stereotypical interest in the show. That said, Kevin should be definitely one of the nicest people in the cast and in the town. He should really, really care about the well-being of his friends and of just the school in general. I think as student body president, he would really strive to make sure that everybody has the best life at school and really be an altruistic leader. I could really see that. Like maybe there would be a student council meeting where the rest of the student government is kind of talking about something stupid like, oh, we should stop having those walking tacos for lunch, or we should spend all of our funds on a new scoreboard for the gym. And Kevin actually cares about the issues of the school and the hard topics that the rest of the student government really doesn't want to talk about, and really just genuinely cares more so than anybody else, the well-being of the students and the school in general. I think having gone through adversity himself, Kevin would absolutely be morally one of the strongest characters in the show. Always wanting to do what's right and always trying to be altruistic and looking at the greater good of the situation. At the same time, I would love to see him 
Also, just be more of a relatable teenager. I feel like I say this with every character, but Kevin is, of course, no exception. I would love to see him as a teenager being relatable as far as not really knowing what he wants to do after high school. He should be funny, but I feel like he should be kind of quietly funny. You know what I mean? Like, not really cynical funny like Reggie or Jughead, but I think he should just be kind of quietly funny. And I feel like his reactions to what other people are doing would contribute to that. And I could even see him being a little clumsy, too. He would overall just be a lot more relatable as a teenager and be a genuinely good human being. I think that a good character arc for Kevin in the show, I think that he should already be just a really stand-up guy at the beginning. And I feel like I've already given, like, personality or being a better friend character arcs to a lot of the characters that I've talked about already. So I feel like Kevin's character arc would maybe be along the lines of what he really wants to do with his life. Because Kevin in the comics is a born leader and a really ambitious person, which we're going to talk about right now. It's very rare that Kevin gets his own storyline and when he does, oh man, are they scraped from the bottom of the barrel. In this day and age, Kevin should be able to freely and openly explore his sexuality, but the show, for some reason, does not want this to happen. The show has proven to prevent this from happening by putting Kevin constantly in questionable situations such as the cruising and, of course, the tickle porn. I still can't believe that Kevin has only gotten, like, one storyline and it's the tickle porn. I mean, when I last saw Kevin, he was talking to his father about, like, going back to New York to pursue, um, Broadway. But again, in the comics, he's not interested in theater. They made that up for him in the show to make him more of a stereotype. Now, like I said, in the comics, Kevin is a lot more of a leader, interested in things like journalism, politics, leadership, and the army. Now, I know that they probably gave him the musical theater thing in the show, you know, besides playing up the stereotype, but they probably also gave it to him because Casey Cott it sings like an angel. But Everybody in the show can sing, pretty much. I mean, I don't know. About half the people in the show, I would say, c can sing. Um, nobody as good as Casey, but still, they can sing, and it doesn't mean that they're, like, interested in musical theater. Just because you can sing, it doesn't mean that you have to do that for a living if you don't want to. And Kevin doesn't want to in the comics. That's not who he is. There are plenty of Broadway stars who are incredible singers who are on TV who don't sing in their shows. And if they do sing in their show every once in a while, it doesn't mean that that's what they want to do for a living. I guess while I love Casey and I love his brother so much, <laughs> I saw his brother live on Broadway back in uh, 2014. <laughs> it's honestly one of the greatest nights of my life. <laughs> but I don't think, if I'm telling you the truth, I don't think I'd have him play Kevin in my version of Riverdale that I'm envisioning. I don't think, first of all, I don't think I'd have any of the actors play any of the roles because they all look too old. But, um, <laughs> but that's beside the point. That's like totally beside the point. And I don't blame Casey for this at all. I blame the writers and directors, but Casey's portrayal as Kevin is, again, just not at all who he is in the comics. And again, not, it's not his fault, but I just can't envision Casey like being the, the Kevin that, that is in the comics. Maybe it's because they look nothing alike. Maybe it's because, um, you know, we're five seasons into this show and it's just hard to envision Casey being that. I, maybe he could do it. I don't know. But but regardless, back to the storylines. That's the section that we're in right now. <laughs> Kevin's storylines thus far have been nothing but stereotypical and offensive, um, such as the tickle porn and, um, you know, just musical theater, if you can even 
call that a storyline. So here are some better ideas for storylines for Kevin. Why didn't they give him the student body president storyline in season two? That was a huge thing. And that's something that actually happens to him in the comics. Again, it would flesh Kevin out, it wouldn't be offensive, and it would stay true to the comics. But no, instead they had Archie and Jughead run against each other while their girlfriends backed them up. Oh, this show is so problematic. If I had it my way after high school, Kevin should have gone into the military instead of Archie. He does join the military in the comics, and we are going to talk about that a little bit more later. But now that I think about it, this has happened more than once. There were storylines that went to Archie that should have gone to Kevin. So do with that what you will. If they were to still have the seven year time jump and if Kevin were to be done with his service in the military by that point, instead of going to New York to pursue Broadway and theater, should go to New York to pursue journalism, just like in life with Kevin. When he's in high school, he could be thinking a lot about what he wants to do with his life. If he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, if he wants to pursue journalism, he loves food almost as much as Jughead, so maybe he thinks about becoming a chef. I don't know. He would actually be friends with the Archie and Friends gang, being integral to their storylines as well as having his own, and not just pop in every once in a while to sing a show tune, or fangirl with Betty about who she's dating. There is no denying that Kevin's storylines, if you can even call them that, in the show have been a complete joke, and he deserves so, so, so much better. Now, like I said, Kevin's friendships in the show have all been just super one-sided and just kind of tags along with what one of the girls is doing. The friendships that I would want him to have would actually have some substance to them. <laughs> so the first friendship I want to talk about is Veronica. Now after Veronica finds out that Kevin is gay, they bond and become really good friends. And I think that this friendship would work really, really well in the show. Not with him being her accessory, but him being her friend. With Veronica being Veronica, in the comics, not the show. Oh, I hate her in the show. <laughs> but with Veronica being Veronica, she knows how important image can be. So she could help Kevin with his political campaign if he's running for class president at Riverdale High. She could be his campaign manager. And with Veronica being the naive, warm-hearted, romantic that she is in the comics, I think that it would make sense for Veronica and Kevin to talk to each other and confide in each other about their romantic relationships in high school. I can't really see him doing this with Betty. I think that that's more of like a Betty and Jughead thing. Like a, you know, Betty talks to Jughead about Archie and Jughead's like, yes, you guys should totally be together. Like that's Betty and Jug <laughs> Jughead's friendship, um, part of it anyway. But I could see Veronica and Kevin kind of having a similar relationship like that maybe. Like saying like, oh, right now I kind of have my eyes on so-and-so. Oh, that's cool. I hope it works out for you. You know, I feel like if every member of the main cast of my version of Riverdale like had a friend to talk to about their romantic endeavors, it would be Betty and Jughead, Archie and Reggie when they're like shooting hoops or throwing a football or something. And then Veronica and Kevin. I think that those... um pairings I think would be good for conversations like that. <laughs> Comment down below if you agree. <laughs> now this is something I really want to see happen with these three friendships. <laughs> Another friendship that I could see working out really well is that of Kevin and Jughead. Now I feel like I've said this already a couple of times but Kevin loves food almost as much as Jughead. So I could totally see them like eating at Pops together or maybe eating at Pops with everybody else and they order like way more food than everybody else and like they high five and stuff. And maybe since, you know, Jughead has been known in the comments to be made fun of a lot because he's a little bit of an oddity, maybe Kevin would be the only one to not make fun of him and actually, um, you know, takes Jughead seriously maybe when nobody else does and that could really mean a lot to Jughead. And as both members of the LGBTQIA plus community, they could talk about 
maybe like what it was like coming out or when they realized or if it's or if it's just been that way ever since they can remember because in 2016 when Jughead came out as asexual he was talking to Kevin I don't know I just love the idea of Jughead and Kevin being friends I just love that and I think that it would work out really well I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one but a friendship that I think would also be interesting would be Reggie I don't have a whole lot to say about this one but I think that their opposite personalities would make for an interesting dynamic. Like, obviously they would not be like best friends because Kevin is way too nice for Reggie. <laughs> but I think that Reggie's cynicism and Kevin's like complete lack of cynicism would make for an interesting um, dynamic and like a good give and take. I feel like that could be kind of a fun duo sometimes. Like if they're, I don't know, solving a mystery or something and Reggie and Kevin get stuck together and they kind of like are like a little like good cop, bad cop thing. <laughs> or if like Reggie is using like crude humor and Kevin gets kind of flustered and uncomfortable like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and I also think that he should have a genuine friendship with Archie. Now, Archie being the leader of the Archie and Friends gang, I think he should have a solid friendship with everybody and Kevin should be no exception. Archie and Kevin would talk to each other about their problems. Maybe if one of them is going through a hard time, the other one is there for them. Also, in pop culture, we just need to normalize a gay man and a straight man being genuine friends with each other and not fetishizing that or not having the gay man developing feelings for the straight man. Like, it's, it's just getting old like fetishizing same-sex friendships where one of them is gay. Like lesbians can have female friends, gays can have male friends. A bisexual person can have a friend without becoming attracted to them. Now I get it, crack ships exist and in my opinion you can ship whatever you want as long as it's not incest, pedophilia, or really really toxic. But also people can just be friends. And I think that that's something that a lot of teen dramas really fail to realize. Um, especially Riverdale. There are no, like, solid friendships in Riverdale. Now I'm going to start this off by telling you that I'm not going to be including Moose in this section because I didn't like Kevin and Moose together at all. It's fine if you did, I just did not. I didn't mind Moose's storyline of being bisexual in the show and having a really hard time accepting it because he is very, very stereotypically masculine in the comics. But the only person he shows any interest in in the comics is Midge. And for someone to have only one love interest in those comics is rare. So I wish that that translated into the show and that he was only with Midge. But that's something that I'm going to talk about in my eventual minor characters character essay. All right, on to Kevin's love interest that I think he should have had or should have in the show. First off is Joaquin. I really liked Kevin and Joaquin while they lasted. That's all I have to say. Kevin has a few significant love interests in the comics, the first of which is Devin, and he is Kevin's first boyfriend. But unlike Kevin, Devin isn't out when they begin their relationship, which makes it a little bit hard to date. However, Devin makes it clear that he wants to be with Kevin, and they become an official couple. For the most part, Kevin and Devin really enjoy their time together, and their relationship goes well. But it is just a high school relationship. Kevin ends things with Devin when he catches him hanging out with another guy, expressing that he thought that they were going steady. After asking Kevin to please forgive him, Devin responds by saying that he's not sure he wants to be tied down to one relationship when they're so young, and that he might just want to have fun for a little while. With that, Kevin says that he can forgive Devin, but he can't necessarily trust him for a while, so they break it off. Kevin also begins a relationship with someone in the Life with Kevin series, who for the life of me, I cannot find his name. I think it might be Chris, but don't quote me on that. But since this series of issues wasn't a very long one, neither was this relationship. Okay, in the 10 year 
12 year whatever span of the comics 10 yeah it's 10 years sophomore junior senior and then a seven year time jump yeah 10 years um in the 10 year span of the show kevin has had three love interests joaquin moose who we already said we're not gonna talk about and fangs now i also want to say that i liked him and fangs the fact that their relationship survived college and the rest of the seven year time jump was quite commendable. However, I have mixed feelings with them actually ending up together at this point. While they've had a lot of sweet moments and I don't think it's necessarily over, at the same time, their relationship got started with them both being possessed by a cult, the aftermath of which involved them ghosting and lying to each other for several months. Also, the fact that they were together for eight years and a couple of months after they broke up, Fangs declared his love for Tony. Like, he doesn't just say, Tony, I think I may be developing feelings for you. He says, I love you after ending an eight year relationship. <laughs> Yikes. Just think about that. Like, he said that he loved Tony. You'd think that he'd still be hung up on Kevin if they were together for eight years and they just broken up a couple months ago. Like, that's just so weird to me. Like, lo love works in mysterious ways, I guess. So even though I maybe would have liked that Kevin and Fangs would have worked things out, that all just kind of tells me that it was never meant to be. But hold on. If he can't end up with Fangs then who should he end up with? Is there someone else who he's compatible and could live a long, happy life with? The answer is yes. Do you know who he is? Well, I'm about to tell you. His name is Clay Walker. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this Clay Walker from the comics. Some of the most important moments for Kevin took place in the second volume of the Life with Archie series, The Married Life. The series jumped forward from the usual high school time frame, offering a window into the adult lives of the Archie Comics gang. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The story was presented in two parallel timelines, one in which Archie married Veronica and one in which Archie married Betty. In the future timeline, Kevin has followed in his father's footsteps and enlisted in the military, where he meets his future husband in a military hospital. In issue 16 of Life with Archie, Archie and his friends attend Kevin's marriage to Dr. Clay Walker. The wedding takes place in both parallel timelines, and Clay leads the same life in both. Clay is a physical therapist and native of Baltimore who helps the adult Kevin Keller recover from injuries sustained during an unnamed war. During the recovery, the two grow close and eventually fall in love. After Kevin recovers, the two decide to get married. The chocolate shop holds the wedding, with Riverdale's mayor officiating. Clay is also supportive of Kevin's run for U.S. Senate, which he wins, go Kevin, while making his own career change. He replaces a retiring doctor and takes over his clinic. I think this would be really, really good for Kevin. I like him and Fangs as much as the next person, but I also really think he needs a fresh start. Now, I understand this is a teen drama, but not everyone has to marry someone they've known since high school. You can find love later in life. That's okay. Now, obviously Kevin is not in the military in the show, but bringing in Clay could still work. This is still, after all, a show where people are constantly being put in danger and getting hurt. Kevin can be put in a situation like this and find out that he needs physical therapy. Enter Clay Walker, his physical therapist and future husband. I really, really, really want to see Clay in this show, you guys. You have no idea. <laughs> Kevin just needs a fresh start in every way possible. Every single way. And yeah, he deserves better. Kevin deserves better. That's where I'm going to end it. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you guys ever so much for watching. Obviously, I couldn't get into every single aspect of Kevin's character because despite being a character that hasn't lasted nearly as long as the rest of the Archie and Friends gang, he really has had a lot of his own series um, in the 11 years that he's been relevant. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. If you have any other questions for me about what else I would like to see Kevin's character become in my hypothetical version of Riverdale that I'm envisioning for all of these videos, feel free to comment them down below. I would be more than happy to answer those. Kevin Keller just deserved worlds, worlds better than what he got. And it legitimately makes me angry. So if there's anything else you wanna know regarding Kevin, let me know in the comments. And the Archie video is coming up. I know that I keep saying that, but it is coming up. Don't worry, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. I have been incredibly busy with finals and with just college in general. I have quite a busy life. So if I don't upload as often as I'd maybe like, it's not because I don't care about you guys. It's not because I don't want to. It's just because I have a lot going on. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it and consider subscribing to my channel for more fun videos from me. And thank you so much for watching again. And I hope that you have a wonderful, amazing day.